Hi and welcome to our first episode of Startups Weekly. I'm Simon and I will guide you through the show today and these are our topics. Welcome again to our new weekly show where we present you the latest news from the startup and tech scene. Later, my colleague Thomas uh, will tell you more about recent investment rounds, but without further ado, we start with the top story of this week. The topic of climate change has now arrived uh, in people's minds due to the Swedish activist Greta Thunberg. All around the world, startups are working uh, on solving that crisis. The German energy agency uh, DENA released a list of 100 startups working on the energy transition. To their festival, the tech festival, they invited the most promising ones. And we also went there, talked to a few founders and hear what they said. Let's have a look. For months, children and young people have been taking to the streets at Fridays for Future to campaign for governments to finally take action against climate change. One building block for a successful energy transition is the development of new technologies, which the German Energy Agency, founded in 2000, honors annually with a SET award. This year, more than 450 companies from 80 countries applied with their business ideas. One of the winners in the category of innovative mobility is the young startup Bodawerk from Uganda. It's our very, very first pitch, our very first award, our very first application ever. Uh, we got quite surprised when we got the invitation email. Uh, and reaching here, we figured it is, it's really, it's a big thing. It's global. You have big players. <laughs> From, from government to venture capitalists and um, yeah, we are very excited to see which impact that event has on us. While Bodawerk wants to replace old motorcycle engines with electric drive systems, the German startup Anapta, winner in the low emission energy production category, wants to revolutionize the production of hydrogen. We like to compare it to the tech industry of the 1980s where um, people were building mainframes, large supercomputers, and uh, expecting that this would be the future of computing, but then the personal computer came and disrupted this industry. So at the moment, electrolysis, um, the production of hydrogen, is done in huge industry projects. What we're trying to do is to build a very small box, our electrolyzer, which you can plug and play and then stack. And like this, we have a small unit that creates a large hydrogen electrolyzer. And because we're building a small standardized unit, we can drive down the cost. 17% of the total energy consumption in Germany was generated by renewable sources in 2018. A figure that is expected to rise even further in the coming years. But critics are skeptical about energy production entirely from renewable sources because they fear bottlenecks in weather-dependent energy production. The Swedish startup Lixt, which won a prize in the energy efficiency category, is taking on this issue. Today, when you want to introduce more renewables, they are very much volatile up and down. At the same time, we have new disruptive loads from electric vehicles. And to handle that, uh, you need to have more grid flexibility and not the least at the grid edge. So today we could offer a universal hardware that fits in all fuse boxes and the ability for utilities to really connect the grid edge and work with um, demand side management. The other prizes of the evening went to the Australian startup Planet Arc Power and Divine Bamboo from Uganda. The SET award aims to showcase the most innovative and effective business models in the areas of energy transition and climate protection and to connect the founders with companies, investors and other startups. Hopefully the many representatives of companies and politicians will take these many innovative ideas as inspiration to take measures to protect our future. Also a warm welcome from my side. And let's start with some rumors, because the latest investment of this week isn't officially confirmed yet. But according to a report by Deutsche Startups, SoftBank is investing 500 million euros in the German travel activity startup Get Your Guide. Besides TripAdvisor, which is by far the biggest competitor with 1.4 billion euros in revenue, 
the latest numbers shown that Get Your Guide is doing better in terms of annual revenue than both Kluge and Viator. What's interesting here is the SoftBank already invested more than 200 million euros in the Hong Kong based startup Kluge at the beginning of April. Get Your Guide is an online booking platform that provides its users with unique travel experiences. Neither SoftBank nor Get Your Guide wanted to confirm the report so far. Another German startup which gets investment in the last week is Steady. The exact amount was not disclosed, but the startup speaks of a million euro investment. Steady wants to help media professionals and journalists financing their offers. On their platform, revenue doubled last year. The biggest competitor in that field is the American startup Patreon. Unlike Patreon, Steady is primarily concerned with the financing of journalism content and so far 95% of their projects come from Germany. The expansion of the platform is also the main reason for the investment as co-founder Gabriel Juran uh, told us on the phone. The money we raise will be used to expand into other European countries. Right now we're very much focused on the German market, but this is about to change. Let's take a look at our European neighbors, where we see the Spanish business management platform Holded has raised 6 million euros in its Series A round. After the startup has already collected 1.6 million euros in their seed round, Lakestar, Norta Capital and Seed Rocket for Founders Capital took part. Holded was grown significantly, with the numbers of users were increased from 10 to 30,000 in just 12 months. Holdit offers a cloud-based solution that helps SMEs manage their businesses. Founder Yavi von der Villa told EU startups that they want to use the money to add new features and enter new markets. The Spanish startup Glovo received 320 million euros investment in total and is active in 18 countries. Glovo has a strategy that delivers all ordered products to the customers within 60 minutes. You can buy a whole range of products, not only food. Glovo continues to scale rapidly and we have a big ambition for this round of investment, says Oscar Pierre, co-founder and CEO of Glovo. While it's possible to order a pizza uh, from almost anywhere without any problem, our four-legged friends um, are not supplied with their own delivery service yet. This is now changing thanks to the London startup Butternut Box, which is delivering fresh dog food. The market for dog food delivery seems to be very interesting because the startup has now received an investment of 17.4 million euros. Butternut Box has produced more than 8 million meals for dogs across the UK and last year saw revenue growth by 700%. Dishes are cooked with fresh ingredients and portioned according to a dog's breed, weight and exercise regime before they are delivered to customers. Co-founder David Nolan told The Standard, we want to diversify our offering to serve customers across the board. This were the investment news for this week and now back to Simon. That's already it with our first episode. We are looking forward to hear your feedback. But before you turn off, we have like one Exciting last thing for you, a sneak peek with the AI expert Kate Crawford. You can find the whole clip on YouTube and on our website. Till then, we see us next week and do epic shit. Bye. So today, we're going to talk about the way that images are used in AI. We're interested in three questions in particular. First, what is an image for the purposes of artificial intelligence? And what work do images do in AI systems? And finally, what is at stake in how AI systems are harvesting, labeling, and deploying images in the world? The challenge of images and what they mean will always be far more political than a technical issue. Once labels are applied to images, a type of meaning has been constructed at the level of representation and identity. And this can have profound consequences for how we understand the world and understand ourselves, of course, just ask 6% black Michael Jackson here. And who gets to decide what images mean is fundamentally about the root of power and hierarchy. So tonight, we're going to open up the question of images, AI, and power.